Neurolens. So perhaps you've been prescribed Neurolenses by your optometrist, or you've read some of the marketing material and are wondering about them. Well, in today's video, we want to break down what is the Neurolens unit and what are the pros and cons of Neurolens, as well as what are your other options. So first, what is the Neurolens unit? Well, the Neurolens unit is an unit that can take automated measurements of how your eyes align both vertically and horizontally. It is convenient because it can do this without a technician or, and or an optometrist taking those measurements, so it does that automatically. So one of the pros of the Neurolens is time savings in doing so, as well as many eye exam providers don't always look at all of those measurements during the course of a regular eye exam, although an in-depth eye exam will. Which kind of leads us into the cons of Neurolens. Some of the cons of Neurolens are that these measurements can actually be taken in a variety of other ways. So all the same measurements that a Neurolens takes can actually be performed by the doctor during the eye exam. The other con of Neurolens is that when it does these measurements, there's a lot of things it doesn't take into account. The Neurolens unit is taking these measurements in a very artificial closed environment. So there is no notion as to whether or not the prism that's being prescribed and or measured is gonna be helpful with somebody's vestibular system or inner ear. And what I mean by that is, how does that prism impact the person when they're moving their head and looking around and doing all these other things in daily life? You know, was the testing a one-off? There's a lot of other information that the doctor needs to take into account when properly prescribing lenses with PRISM. So while the neural lens is very convenient in some ways, it actually cannot outperform an optometrist who is specially trained in prescribing PRISM that helps the eyes and the brain work together, as well as takes into account what's happening with the inner ear when that's happening. Otherwise, you can get a prescription with prism in it that may help the eyes work together a little bit better, but actually interferes with the integration between the eyes and inner ear. Now, the other thing is when it comes down to options, the lenses that are patented that are prescribed by NeuroLens, the special trademark NeuroLens lenses, have some interesting qualities to them, which we won't dive into completely here. However, if glasses are properly prescribed, and I had a patient with this just the other week, if you can properly prescribe the right prism for the person and properly design lenses in a, you know, without having to use the patented ones, you can actually save the patients a lot of money and get better results. So for example, this one gentleman had been prescribed neural lenses with differing prism in the bottom than the top for all of his usage. I think it was around $1,000 that he was gonna have to pay for these. Now, what happened when we looked at that was he actually needed a different amount of prism um, than the neural lens had prescribed to get the optimal binocular function for when he was moving his head. Not only that, but he spent a lot of his day doing things up close. And unfortunately, having only the differing prism in the bottom of the lens was actually going to make his computer screen time more symptomatic, or he was gonna to have to sit there and tilt his head at the computer. So with the correct prism prescriptions, we were actually able to get him outfitted with lenses that not only reduced his symptoms further, gave him better performance enhancing improvements, but also wound up coming in at a much, much more reasonable price point for it too, because we didn't have to use a trademarked product for that. And this comes back to that engineering understanding of things is if we know how things work and we know why things work, we often have ways of achieving things that are even better than if we rely just on the limitations of the device itself. Um, so that's the basic sort of summary around Neurolens. It is a useful measurement system. The, um, the basically the trademark lenses, in my opinion, are, are, are a higher cost than they necessarily should be, especially when there's alternatives that can be done and ways of prescribing things and ways of doing stuff that can get a patient much, much better results at a lower price point for that person, ultimately giving them a better value to get the performance and the reduction in symptoms that they were ultimately looking for.